What's up everybody? Welcome to Coding with Chaim. In this week's video, we're going to talk about deploying an application to Heroku. So in our example, we're actually going to be deploying a sort of a full stack React application to Heroku. The uh, client side application is going to be written in React, which is what you see on screen right now. This is basically an application that I, you know, simply bootstrap using the React app. And then the back end, the back end is, you know, pretty much written in Node. And the idea here is that our Node application is both responsible for serving the React application in production, at least, because obviously in, in, in sort of in the local environment, we're actually using Webpack Dev Server to sort of, you know, serve the application to the browser. But for production, what we're actually going to do is have the very same Node application that's kind of acting as our REST API will also be responsible for serving the application to the browser statically. So let's actually get into it and see some code and see the basic setup that I've kind of already done. And then we can actually start getting ready for deployment. So really all I've done here is I've basically set up a simple Express application. As you can see, I'm importing Express, uh, creating this sort of app object. And then I'm basically uh, requiring my API, which I'll show you that in a second. Um, and then here, down here on lines eight and nine, I'm basically saying that the port will be either equal to process.m.port, which will get set by Heroku or whoever we're deploying with. Again, in our example, we're using Heroku. Or if that's not set, say we're in a simple local environment, we can just set that to 5,000. And then I'm basically just saying, I'm just telling the application to go ahead and listen to whatever port it's currently set to. And then I'm just writing out to the console saying that we're currently running, listening on this particular port. Okay, so now let's actually go ahead and see the uh, sort of API setup. So I've got this API uh, fold file this, that lives in the index of the API folder. So I've got this API folder right over here. So we've got the index file right over here. And this pretty much just creates the, uh, an express instance of express promise router. And then I'm basically pulling in the sample router, which lives right over here. And then what I'm really just doing is, again, kind of similar to what we did in the server.js file, I'm basically saying that if we're going to go to slash sample, then we're going to use a sample router. So the flow basically is a little is a little something like this. When you go to slash API, you're going to get the API folder entirely. And within the, within the API folder, it kind of gets broken down a little bit further. If you're going to go to slash sample, which in our case is the one and only entity that we have, if you go to slash sample, you basically are going to get the sample entity, which really just has the single endpoint at the root URL, which will basically send back a status code of 200 and a simple message saying, welcome to coding with Chaim, right? That's kind of like the basic idea, the basic flow. This, of course, is a very, very small taste of what an actual REST API would actually look like in Node, but I kind of wanted to do that so we can kind of get a feel of what a sort of full stack React application with a Node backend would look like in terms of getting ready for deployment. A couple of other basic things that I did to kind of get the setup to work here. Um, in the package adjacent of the client side application, so again, this is a client side application that was bootstrapped using Create React App. In the client side application, I basically set up the proxy that Webpack Dev Server, whenever Webpack Dev Server, when, in other words, when you're running the application locally, it's actually Webpack Dev Server that serves the, the application to the browser. And so what we're really telling Webpack Dev Server right over here with this setting in the package of JSON is that any request that's kind of getting sent from the client side application, it should proxy that off to the, to the server. So the server is listening at 5,000, Webpack Dev Server is going to serve our application on 3,000. So take any request that you're getting at 3,000 and go ahead and proxy that off to 5,000. And there's two reasons why this is super beneficial. One is because in so doing, we now no longer have to worry about cores, right? Because server-to-server -server communication doesn't require any kind of cores set up. It's only when you're going from a client to a server that you have to kind of get make sure that, you know, you have your origin URL sort of whitelisted or blacklisted, depending on what, however you want to work it. But the basic idea is the entire idea of cores is really only relevant when it's like a browser making a request to a server and if the browser is sort of, you know, running an application that's kind of getting served from a different uh, application, which would be, in, or from a different server, which is, which is actually the case in our example, right? Because Webpack Dev Server is the one that's going to be serving our React application in local development mode to port 3000, and our REST API is listening in port 5000, so they're technically coming from two different origins. So therefore, this would actually cause us an issue, and we have to kind of make sure that our server is configured to deal with cores. But by us adding in this proxy and telling Webpack Dev Server to proxy all the requests from Webpack Dev, Dev Server straight to our node server, this allows us to sort of circumvent the entire cores issue, because again, server-to-server -server communication doesn't have the issue of cores. Another sort of big benefit that this buys us is the fact that during development, the URL, the request that we're making to the URL, in other words, if you weren't specifying the proxy here, when you actually come into your actual sort of um, client set code, and as you can see, I'm doing this right over here, when you're trying to actually make a request through API, if you don't specify the proxy, you then have to literally have the sort of uh, URL that you pass to the fetch or to your Axios, whatever you're using would have to literally be, you know, HTTP colon slash slash localhost 5000 slash API slash sample. In other words, you'd actually have to include the entire origin URL within the URL they're trying to make the request to. 
Now, as you can imagine, that origin URL is different locally as it is in production, because locally you're going to localhost, but in production you're actually going to go to your domain. So it might be like mydomain.com slash API slash sample. So now you have to keep track in your code. Am I currently running this locally in development? Am I currently running this in production? And you may even have more environments. You may have like a staging environment. You may have like a testing environment. And so now you have to have like some kind of environment variable that you're keeping track of to know which environment you're currently running on. And then based on that, you need to know which origin URL to kind of append to the URL. But by us simply proxying this here, again, this is only going to be relevant when you're running the machine, uh, when you're running your application locally. Because when you're running the application locally, it's going to be Webpack Dev Server that's going to serve the application to the browser. And in which case, we're basically telling Webpack Dev Server, I want you to go ahead and just proxy all the requests to my local server, which is currently running on 5000. And so now in our code, all I now need to do is just go ahead and say slash API slash sample, which will hold true regardless of which environment we're running on. Because even when we're actually going to go ahead and deploy this app, it'll still just go ahead and say slash API slash sample, which makes the entire deployment process a lot easier to kind of think about. So those are the kind of like two really big benefits of, of doing you know the entire sort of application structure with this sort of setup again we don't have to worry about cores and also we don't have to worry about the different environments it all just kind of works regardless of which environment you're in and it makes for a really neat uh setup so with all that introduction out of the way we've basically seen all the code now we can actually start getting into the actual deployment process of this of this particular application so one of the things that we have to first make sure that we have installed in our on, on our machines is the Heroku client. Now, I already have it, but I'm just going to kind of show you um, what that would sort of look like. So if you go to the Heroku client um, and the installation page, that basically give you very clear instructions of like, you know, whichever system you're on, if you're on Mac OS or if you're on Windows or if you're on like a Linux, it tells you exactly which sort of um, environment you need to, you know, how to install it for your given environment. Follow the instructions. The installation usually goes off without a hitch. Once you do that, the next thing you do is you go to your terminal. So as you can see here, I've got the backend terminal over here. Um, and then this terminal is the one running my client side application. So I'm going to open up another one and we're going to head on over to this application. Now, as you can see by the fact that it already says here, Git master, I've basically already made this a, a, a sort of Git repository, which is the first thing you need to do. So typically you'd have to go ahead and say like Git init. And now what we do is we're going to go ahead and say Heroku create. Now, if you so if you're not so this already assumes that you've actually already installed your Heroku client, right? So once you've installed your Heroku client, now you can actually start running Heroku commands from within your terminal. So the first thing you want to do is actually go ahead and say uh, Heroku create, and then you can kind of give it a name of the application. So in our case, we're just going to go ahead and say this is going to be called Sample um, App. So we're going to say Heroku create Sample App, and then if you're not currently logged in or if the name is already taken, you're going to kind of get some errors. So if you're not already logged in with your Heroku client. It's going to tell you that you have to log in and then you're just going to go ahead and say like yes i want to log in and what it's going to do is it's going to open up the browser which will allow you to log in once you log in you just basically uh hit close on the browser and then it pretty much will automatically log you in within the client so that's kind of really neat so you don't have to worry about how like you know what steps you need to take it'll really prompt you through the entire process in a very sort of simple way but for our purposes here we now need to come up with a name that's not already been taken so we're going to say heroku create coding um with Time. Now this goes ahead and actually creates an application. Okay. Now, another thing we need to do before we actually start getting ready to run all the commands to actually get the, the uh, deployment done is we need to kind of come to the sort of root of our application. So again, the root of our application is where the back end lives and we have to do some basic setup. We have to set up a script. Uh, and this script will be start. All right, so till now, I was basically just running this application by simply doing node server.js. But in this case, we're actually going to set up a, an actual script. Okay, so in the script, we're basically going to do the following. We're going to go ahead and say prod is equal to true. And we're soon going to see why this is important. And then we're just going to go ahead and tell it to actually run node server.js. Okay. Another thing that we're going to want to do as far as scripts are concerned is we're going to want to go ahead and set up a post install. So a post install is kind of like this neat little hook that you can use within your package at JSON that basically says, after you install the dependency of the application, go ahead and do the following commands. So we basically are going to create this. And this is sort of like an already, just like start is kind of like one of the sort of almost reserved keywords that's sort of already recognized by Node. It's not like your custom um, command. This is sort of one that's sort of already familiar within the Node ecosystem. Post install is one that's already familiar. And what we're going to do is we're going to tell it to go to CD client, go to our client folder, and then run yarn so go ahead and install the uh yarn dependencies or the sort of node dependencies for our react application so this so basically the flow will happen is heroku will pull down our application it'll install all of our own local dependencies and then the post install will kind of take in 
forcing the app, forcing the server, the Heroku server, to then go to the change directory to the client server or to the client folder and then run the yarn command within there, which would then take us to the client folder within um, our React application, go to that package.json and go to its scripts. And we're also going to go ahead and create another post install hook. Sorry, this is the wrong place. Got to go to scripts. We're going to go ahead and create a post install hook. And what we're going to do is we're going to tell it to run yarn build. Okay. Because of, of course we want to make sure that we're actually not pushing up the built sort of artifacts. We want to have that get built on the server. And you can actually see that if you look at the package or the git ignore that you get from within create react app, one of the things that actually gets um, sort of ignored is the actual build because what's sort of a typical thing to do is to not actually, you know, push up your build, but rather have the build, you know, either get done like a middle server, like on a Jenkins server, or in the case of Heroku, we just kind of let Heroku handle this. And so the way that we do that is, again, in the sort of root URL and the sort of back end of our application, we're basically saying that after you're done running Yarn, you're going to change directories, change directories, go to the client. Then you're going to run Yarn to install its dependencies there. Once that's done, on that post install, run the build so they actually create like a sort of um, production ready build um, folder of, of, of basically take our entire act application and sort of condense it down to just a bunch of static assets that's already been minified and bundled and kind of ready to go to be a sort of efficient um, React application, right? And so what that's going to do is it's actually going to come right over here um, in, within the client folder and it's going to create a folder called build, okay? So that's actually going to be very important. Now, another quick thing we need to do as far as setup is concerned is we need to create a file called a proc file. A proc file is really where you just pretty much tell Heroku which commands to run. In other words, by default, Heroku will know to run Yarn because it, it'll automatically detect that we're running a sort of node application, but it's automatically going to know to run Yarn. Once it runs Yarn, the post install will take over to know to change directory to the client application and then run Yarn over there. Then the package adjacent of the client's post install will take over to go ahead and run the build. Once all that's done, now I basically need to tell Heroku, first of all, what kind of process is this? Is this like a web process or some other kind of process? And also how to start this particular process. So in our case, we're basically going to tell Heroku that this is of type web and the command, the command to start it will just be yarn start. Okay, so we've got our proc file set up. It's basically going to tell it to run yarn start. Once all the sort of installation is done, it's going to go ahead and run this. Okay, now one final thing that we need to actually do to get this whole thing to actually work is we need to actually teach our node application how to serve the client application so again when you run this application locally and you're in like your client folder and you just run yarn start at that point it's going to be webpack dev server it's going to serve the application to the browser but the way that i have sort of set up this entire thing and the way that i've been kind of talking about this is we understand that in, in our example what's actually going to happen is when we're running this in production it's actually going to be our very same node rest api that's also going to be responsible for serving the application to the browser statically but we of course only want it to happen if we're in the production environment so what we're going to do is we're going to write the following code we're going to say if process dot env dot prod which we have basically specified this to be true inside the package so we're basically saying prod true and then node server js so by the time this file this file gets run will actually already be in um production environment so this will actually be true now we need to actually import path because we're going to take advantage of this path module which is pretty much just a built-in uh, module within the node ecosystem that kind of helps you deal with um, paths to files and folders um, another thing that we're going to have to pull in is going to be env so env is a library that i've already installed and what this basically does is it allows you to actually take variables and attach them to the environment within whichever system you're running on so it's really handy so for instance this prod which are reading off a of process that end in this port, which we're reading off a of process that end. What's what's allowing us to actually put that onto the process that end is this is this a module called dot env. And so what we need to do is very simply require dot env and then just call dot config. And now that's all you kind of need to do. And now you magically sort of are now able to start appending things to the process that end and you can sort of attach any variable that you want. Now this this line of this line of code right over here basically says that we're, we're telling express that when you're in process that end in other words when we're in production mode i want to use the following middleware to actually serve our build folder that you'll find inside the client folder i want you to serve it statically so we're basically saying app that use express.static express.static is how you tell express which folder you want it to serve statically and then we're just basically using this path module to tell it exactly where to find this fo this folder so we're basically going from dir name and then we go up to, to dot slash client which as you can see is going to literally be right here dot slash client and at that point since we're already going to be after the fact that you know heroku will have already run our build script it'll then find the build folder 
And then the next thing we need to do is tell Express that every request that you get, in other words, every request that doesn't sort of satisfy this request here, in other words, if you're not going to slash API, because of course, if you're going to slash API, then pretty much will Express will know that it should take you to this API uh, folder over here. And then in that case, it'll take you to that, you know, slash sample. It basically knows how to recognize any requests. But any other request that it doesn't recognize, pretty much just go to like app.get, which will just be like a star, kind of like a sort of follow through or fall through, just accept everything. And when that happens, all you're going to do is just go ahead and say res.send file path.join dir name, path slash client build index.html. Pretty much just serve the index.html, which is pretty much going to be the actual one and only page just getting served to the browser. And then within that index.html, of course, that's where the React application will take over because we're pretty much going to have like the one div that's going to have like the ID of root. And then we are basically going to have like the React DOM that render again. This is just, you know, sort of basic React stuff, but React will pretty much take over at that point and literally inject our entire React application directly within to that, you know, one div that finds itself in the index.html. So all our server needs to do is actually serve the index.html to the browser and the rest will just kind of get handled automatically by React. Now that's pretty much all the code that we need to write within our application to actually get this started. Now we can actually start working within our Heroku uh, CLI and actually start getting this all ready for deployed. And so this pretty much looks very similar to actually simply pushing through your own Git repository, right? So again, this is a Git repository, so you've already done Git in it. Now we're going to go ahead and say Git add that. Just go ahead and stage all the files. Git commit dash n. We're just going to go ahead and say that we are ready to deploy, right? And then finally, all we do is git push Heroku master, and then the actual deployment process will start. Now this will take a minute, so I'll see you when this is done. Okay, so now that it's done deploying to Heroku, let's run the command Heroku open, which will automatically open up a window to the application. And as you can see here, the URL is now codingwithchaim.heroku.com. And as you can see, we see welcome to Coding with Chaim. And this is of course running on Heroku. Well, that does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please drop a like, subscribe, and I'll be back next week with another video.